The Cozy Jumper has returned. Hey guys, my name is Achano. Welcome to another Cozy Jumper video. Today, I thought in the Game Engine series, we would do something a little bit more fun than I was intending to do because I've had a pretty bad day. I uh, deleted like a few hours worth of work in the live stream accidentally by like reverting the wrong file, so hasn't been good. So instead of diving into our game project and doing some boring like project organization, moving this from the sandbox class into its own game project, showing you guys how to set up a new game project in Hazel, I thought that I would save the lovely fun task that that is for probably the next episode. And today let's take a look at something a little bit more fun. Let's take a look at how you can make a little world, a little map inside this little game of ours. So just a quick recap, we have been working on like a 2D top down game here, some kind of RPG, very loosely defined. And last time we added support for subtextures or sprite sheets, check out that video if you haven't already. So today let's dive in and take a look at how we can basically use all of these subtextures, all of these little various sprites that we have within that one texture to construct some kind of world. Now, just a just 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 a word on this whole process. There are so many ways to do this. There are so many ways to craft a world, and it completely depends on what it is you are trying to make. If you have a very like set vision in mind and you know that for example, you want, you know, an island surrounded by water and you want a path here and you want a tree over there and you want this and that, then obviously you're going to want to actually create that world yourself. However, on the flip side, it's very common to procedurally generate something. And that's definitely something that we'll be doing at some point just because it's very fun. But it's not just fun. It's just a very, very quick and efficient way to generate a lot of content. Instead of manually having to place everything around the world, you can actually just, you know, write an algorithm that does that for you. And you can definitely combine these two. For example, I can have my base map, my base layout defined by me explicitly. And then have the trees or the different like biomes we'll say just randomly generated on top of that that's totally acceptable as well now going down the route of doing it yourself which is what we're going to attempt to do today um, it's it's not th th there's a lot of ways to do that as well you could literally open up like a little image file and pretend that each pixel is a tile and then you can literally draw that's one of my favorite ways of doing this we're not going to do that today though we're going to do something even simpler what we're going to do is literally open up a string here and inside that string, we're going to add a bunch of characters to that string. And, the, and each character is going to correspond to a specific tile. So that way we can just basically draw it as an, like, as an ASCII string and we don't have to like open up a file or anything like that. This isn't my favorite way of doing something like this. As I mentioned, I think my favorite way of doing a kind of tile-based game level where it's completely static and I know it's gonna be a certain way is probably just like as a very low resolution image file with with each pixel mapping to each tile just because it's very visual i can do it as an external um as an external file i don't have to do it within the c++ code but um this is also totally valid and for small games it might be just easier and faster to do that so let's dive in and take a look at how we can construct some kind of world so last time with the whole texture subtexture situation we ended up with this so i'm just going to uh close this and we're going to move on from this point onwards. The first thing I wanna do is actually take a look at this image file. And uh, I guess we'll do that in Visual Studio's really weird like editor type thing, which I still can't get used to. As you can see, we have certain tiles here that we actually want to deal with. So let's make a little map here that maybe has a bunch of grass around and maybe some of these, uh, some of these like dirt tiles as well. And of course we need to have some kind of transition between the tiles as well. So if this is the bottom left is zero, zero here, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 12, 11, and then the 11 by one, basically 11 X and, and one Y is going to be this kind of centerpiece. So that's what we're going to deal with first. So just to test that out, what I'll do is from these coordinates, I'll type in 11, one, like I just mentioned, and we'll see if that barrel texture is now replaced with that grass texture. And you can see it is not because I, you know, seem to get my X and Y's around today. So 11, 111 is what I meant. I didn't even have to look back at the image to realize my mistake. It's very silly. Okay, beautiful. So there it is, grass, awesome. So with that grass in mind, we know that the one off to the left of it is going to be slightly different. So maybe let's change the stairs to be zero and then 11. 
And these are basically gonna form the building blocks of what we're going to be able to do. So if we add this one, you can see we now have a seamless kind of transition between these two, and it's kind of beginning to look like a little world. Now, the camera is quite zoomed in now. I do probably still want to draw them uh, with a size of one by one. I think that will be our kind of tile size, one by one, just because it's easier to deal with. So if we want to zoom out the camera, what we really just need to do is set the zoom level of the camera to be slightly uh, more zoomed out. So I think if I just do camera set zoom level, I don't even know what it is by default, but I think if I, I think zooming out, does zooming out make it like the number go smaller when we zoom out? I don't remember. No, I didn't think it did because that, that's not how projection really works. Now, what does zoom level actually do? Sets the zoom level, but it doesn't recalculate anything, does it? Okay, so we found a nice little bug type thing where we probably want to recalculate the bounds based on the zoom level. So this is, as far as I can tell, these two lines of code are completely identical. So let's actually uh, let's actually fix this camera class a little bit. Let's, um, we'll add a void called recalculate view. And recalculate view, and in fact, I'll just call it calculate view. Calculate view is going to use um, the zoom level and the aspect ratio and all of that stuff to actually just do this basically. So to calculate the bounds and then set that projection. Um, and for an orthographic camera, again, the view and the projection is kind of tied together just because our way of zooming in is by just changing the projection matrix. So we'll change this to calculate view and we'll do the same thing here. And so this becomes a little bit more simple and it also means that when we set the zoom level like this, since the zoom level changes, we can simply call uh, calculate view. And so now if we do something like this, and again, I still don't know if we're zooming in the right way here, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Okay, so that, that does zoom in and then if I zoom this out to like five now, maybe we will get something that looks a little bit nicer. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. So this is like an accepted zoom level, I think. I'm not sure if it's exactly a one-to-one -one pixel mapping. We can, of course, work that out, but it looks it looks okay and it'll be good enough for us for now. So let's get on to this map creation. So what you can do is literally make kind of a long string. So if I type in static, const char, because this doesn't really, like in fact, we, we don't really want a string. We want a, a const char pointer. We'll call this s underscore map tiles. I'll make this an array and then I will, or in fact, we don't really need to make this an array, it's a pointer. Let's uh, hit equals here and then we'll start actually making our map. So if I type in quotes like this, I can actually, well, I can type any text I want in. And the cool thing about C++ is that if you type in another set of quotes like this, it will actually concatenate these two strings for you. So this is, this is one string. It's basically gone ahead and done this. And that's really cool. And that's really useful for, for situations like this. And in fact, C++ in general deals with strings like very well. There's also like this whole R thing that I really like. Um, that allows you to do like whole multi-line strings like this, you know, and this is all kind of part of the string. You don't need to worry about new lines. It's it's great. So I do like C++'s string handling capabilities. Okay, let's kind of think about this in a more of a visual way. So this is again why I like that whole uh, pixel kind of drawing technique thing. But if we bust out paint here, what I'm thinking is basically just having like this kind of ocean island thing. Um, we have this kind of, you know, this is basically all water. So we can easily just make an infinite kind of water terrain. We don't even have to kind of put the water inside these blocks. But then what I want is a bit of a shoreline here and then we just want dirt here. Maybe trees like randomly scattered or something like that. That's kind of what I'm going for here today. So let's take a look at how we would achieve something like this. I can easily just say that zero is maybe our water. And in fact, you don't really even need to specify water because we could say that if, if, if a block doesn't exist, then it's water. But obviously in this case, we need to actually define it in terms of a square. So maybe if it, even if it is an island, it will look like that. So let's do so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Let's do 24. So our map will be 24 tiles wide. So now I can just uh, copy this and then paste it over here. That did not work as intended. Um, and that's basically going to be uh, my map. So we don't have to make it like, it doesn't have to be uniform or anything like that. Let's just kind of do this for now. I don't really even need to know how 
uh, how big it is. Um, but we'll do something like that. So now let's talk about what the different tiles we might want are. So going back to our RPG pack. So this tile here is going to be like our grass tile. And this is going to be our dirt tile. Now this one, as we mentioned, was one on the X axis, 11 on the Y axis, but we probably want a bit of a transition with water tiles. So water tiles, by the way, we zero is going to be a water tile here. And in fact, if you wanted it to be, uh, to make a little bit more sense, you could easily just take these and like replace them with uh, Ws. So let's do that. And I hate Visual Studio fighting me here, but let's do that in a slightly better way. I'll just replace zero here with W. Okay, and that's a bit better. Let's tab these over. So with our water tiles, and in fact, you know what? This might be better because this way I don't think it's gonna fight me if I just make it over there. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of water tiles and then let's maybe play around with dirt. So since I kind of want to have a roundish kind of circular island, then I can start adding a little bit of a dirt border here. Now. Keep in mind that first of all, you know, this is gonna be fairly rough. And second of all, this is not going to be perfect. And third, third of all, um, you know, we need to actually come up with some kind of way to have more of like a, I guess, a better transition between what is dirt and what is water. Okay, and I'm just gonna fill this in with dirt here. Okay, so now we have a bit of a diamond shape here. Let's maybe add a region here where we have some water, oops, throughout the land, maybe like as some kind of lake, I'll just keep it like that. Um, and that's it. So important things to keep in mind here. The width and height of this is kind of important. Now you can definitely work out, uh, well, probably both of them, but I mean, more realistically, you can work out the height um, we, because obviously we can figure out the length of the string. So it might be worth just adding something here like static const un 32 ts map width. And we can set that to 24 just because that's going to let us deal with this a lot easier. Okay, so if that's the idea, we have 24 as the map width then let's figure out how we can actually create tiles from this. So the thing is, we don't really want to do any transformation to this data. This data is basically usable the way it is because of course, this is just, just a const char pointer and a const char pointer is essentially a bunch of bytes. Each one of these characters is one byte. And since it is a one byte char here, one byte character, which is essentially just, you know, an integer, we can use that itself as like an index into some kind of array to determine what tile I actually want to render. The most efficient way probably to do something like this would be to have literally an array of these kind of subtextures here, where we have a subtexture link up to one of these numbers because these are just numbers. And what you could do is you could actually get the right character, subtract say a certain amount, and then you would have an array offset. And you could do that, especially if you didn't go with like W and D, but maybe with zero and one and all of that kind of stuff. Then you could literally have codes and you wouldn't have to do anything. Now, since we don't really, like performance is not a huge issue for something like this. We're going to just use an unordered map, which is still a fairly efficient way of doing this. We're going to have a char code here translate to a particular subtexture 2D. So that way we can just look up that character code, that, that char, that byte, and then we'll see what texture we need to use for that. So let's say this is our texture map. And then we obviously need to sprinkle a little bit of hazel everywhere here. And then going back here, what I'm going to do is load in all of these sprites as I did. So this was the, this was, was this, this was grass, right? So we don't actually have grass. We're just dealing with dirt and um, water here. So if we go back to this, let's see. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, I think, six. So it's still 11, let's close all this stuff. It's still 11 but we have six here. So six is going to be our dirt texture. So what I'll do is I'll say S texture map for dirt D, I'm going to set that equal to this, right? So now we have a dirt texture and I, I'll probably just maybe take this down a little bit. Um, and then I'll do the same thing for W for water, except if that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So 11 by 11. 
I think should be our water texture. So now we should have a very rough map with no smooth transitions or anything between the tiles of just dirt and water. So now when it comes time to render this, all we really need to do is write a little bit of a for loop. So I will do this, um, I guess I'll just do this here. So we'll say for uh, uint32, um, and you can do this any, you can do this a number of ways, but we'll just, we'll kind of do it in a, in a way that, in, in a way that makes sense, I think, the most. So, um, for uh, y equals zero, y is less than, now we need to know what the height is. So I deliberately didn't write that, but we do still need to know what the map height is. So, um, I think what I might do is, over here I might do, uh, m map width, m map height. And then what we'll do is we'll assign um, over here, where we do all of this stuff, we will assign map width to be the uh, S map width. And then the height we could calculate by just saying map height equals sterling, which is the length of that map width, sorry, of that map tile string, and then divided by, of course, the map width. So now we should have the map height. This is just a, a bit of a easier kind of process, I guess, than us having to just make a variable called map height and then count all of these. And, and then if we added more, we'd have to compensate. So yeah, we'll just, we'll do it this way. It'll be a little bit easier. Okay, so we have the map width, the map height. So now if we iterate through all of that, so map height, y plus plus, and then we're also, notice we're also iterating through the, uh, well, the inner loop is the X loop. That's because we want to try and read our memory like more, more along the lines of how it's actually laid out in memory. So we don't want to be jumping like this because that's not going to be great for our CPU cache um, usage. Like, I mean, this is not much data realistically, uh, but I still don't think it'll all fit into one cache line. Um, anyway, the point is, if you write your loop this way around, it's actually going to be faster than if you write it the other way around. So just keep that in mind. Okay, cool. So, because if we write it this way around, it goes without saying that every single byte that we access here is like the next byte in memory, all the way until we finish iterating through the whole map. Okay, so now we just need to basically look up the texture map. Um, and sorry, the texture map is not the map tiles, which is what I was thinking of. We need to look up um, the map tiles. So we have basically an X and a Y coordinates. So we can do X plus Y times map width, which will get us the appropriate like memory offset. Because remember, like we are, we like to deal with this as a 2D kind of map, as if it's like a 2D array, but it's, st it's still not. It's just one contiguous block of memory. And that's faster than having a 2D array, of course, where you have like a lot of memory in direction. So S texture map uh, is what we're trying to look up. This is the key. So this is our character. So we can say char tile type equals that. And then we can say S texture map tile type. That should be our texture. Now it's possible that it doesn't exist. So you what you could do is you could say if S texture map dot find tile type doesn't equal s texture map dot and right then uh, you can actually find the right thing. So this would just be like a way for us to render some kind of extra like error texture if it doesn't find the right thing. So if we look over here, we could just have like a little bit of a safety net. Let's just say that we render, well, we can just render the barrel or something like that if it does not find the right texture. So what I'll do is over here, I'll write ref subtexture 2D texture, right? And then we'll, and we'll just use Hazel here as well. And then what we'll do is if, um, if this actually equals the end, right? Then or we'll say if it doesn't equal the end, we'll assign texture to be our, our texture map tile type. Otherwise, we will assign texture to be um, one of the textures that we had. So maybe like the barrel. So if you get the barrel, then you're using an invalid tile type. Okay, cool. So uh, what's next? I think we actually, okay, so we actually need to render this obviously. So let's do Hazel Renderer 2D draw quad, and then we'll do, um, we'll draw it there, that's fine. And then one by one, and then the texture is just gonna be texture. And I think that's it. Okay, so we should get a map here. Let's hide everything else and hit F5. 
Okay, so we did get a map technically, it's just that unfortunately I forgot to actually position it. So we're just printing it all at the origin. We don't wanna do that, we want to actually move it around. So since the size is one by one, all I really have to do is just say X, Y, and then I'm done. However, I want it to be centered around the middle. And this is where obviously if you had like a player in this map, you just set the player's position and that would offset the whole map. But since we're not in a position to do that, I'm actually gonna just write X minus uh, M map width divided by two, right? So what we're doing here, and we'll do the same thing with map height. What we're doing here is just offsetting everything by half of its width and height, which should mean that we're drawing everything a little bit offset. So now let's launch this and see what we get. All right, cool. And there is our beautiful looking map that looks very kind of squishy and kind of looks like a fish. There you go. Okay, so um, thoughts about this. I mean, first of all, it's great. Obviously we have a way to render a little map and we can kind of draw whatever we want. If we use an invalid character like a C, then we should get a barrel. Looks like we actually get a crash though. So that's not exactly what I was expecting. What happened here with the text? The text is empty. What? What's wrong with our barrel texture? Did we delete that? Oh, that's the one that we happened to use. Okay, let's get the stairs instead. Barrel texture is just null. So that's why we should fix that though. If we sub obviously if we try and draw a quad with a null texture, then we should just like, I don't know, maybe a cert or something. All right, that's not exactly the stairs, but it looks like we get this weird texture in that place. I think it's also worth noting that everything is upside down and that's because of the way that we render everything, obviously. We of course wanna read it from top to bottom, but OpenGL and the way that our render is set up right now reads it from here to here, which also is like fine, but just a consideration you have to make. If you wanna flip it, you can of course flip it. You can just reverse this whole thing. If I go over here to the position and write map height minus, all of this, then it's going to result in a flip. And you can see I now get the fish the right way round. So that is what you can do if you would like a quick and dirty way of kind of putting a map together. I probably wouldn't do it this way just because it's a little bit tedious. And of course I could spend a lot of time on this and make it look beautiful. I could place a bunch of trees around. It's fairly easy to detect when we transition from a water tile to a dirt tile. We just need to check the neighboring tile. And in that case, what we could do is for example, change one of those dirt tiles or change the dirt tile that is kind of participating in a uh, tile transition to be one of the kind of you know, shores or one of the transition tiles from that sprite sheet. In fact, if you guys wanna see that, maybe we could do that next time. I don't know, drop a comment below. Um, but likely what we're going to do is maybe next time if we refactor the project and do all of that stuff, cause we, need to, we really need to get that stuff done. But in general, what I want to do is also kind of use the drawing technique that we can just, you know, read in like an image file and then see what the pixels are and all that stuff. Um, but then also procedurally generating this would also be a lot faster and easier. But I think you guys get the point. Um, optimizations, why, like this is fairly fast. Like you, reading reading the map data is lightning fast here. There's really nothing you could do, I think, in that regard. The only thing that you could do potentially is combine the geometry together. So at the moment, obviously each one of these quads like each one, like all of these quads are being drawn individually. Like, yes, it is bashed together into one draw, but you're still like de dealing with quite a bit of geometry, right? Because if you look at this, I mean, really what we could do is just say that, well, this is an uninterrupted block. This is an uninterrupted block of dirt. So what we could do is just basically combine those vertices together and draw them as one kind of mesh. That's again, something that you could do if you really wanted to. I, to be honest with 2D rendering like that, it's not something that I see very often because there's never, there's not like a third dimension of potential occlusion. You're always rendering everything that you're seeing. In a game like Minecraft, for example, where you have like, you know, a lot of blocks underneath the surface that you definitely don't want to render because there's so many of them and they're gonna make everything crazy. Well, yeah, you would combine your mesh into just like a visible outline mesh basically of what the outside uh, of what the camera can see from the outside. But in this, like you're basically, you've basically already done that. So it's not really an optimization I think that needs to be made. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Let me know your thoughts with uh, what your favorite way to make these little maps together are. I do wanna still show the, as I mentioned, the whole drawing a map thing in paint. 
Um, and then also I want to uh, probably deal with the kind of tile transitions. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As I mentioned, don't forget that you can help support this series on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the channel. Um, the live stream in which I deleted the code was today, so you can uh, you can jump on that and take a look at, at how amazing that moment was. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.